Hi everyone, welcome to Mr. Wagid's math class. In this unit, we'll move on to discussing lines, angles, and triangles. So let's start with parallel lines. For example, the train track and the pieces of wood are parallel to each other. When you're trying to frame a house or to build a house, the studs need to be parallel to each other. When the city planned for the streets, some of the streets are parallel, or the street itself with the two yellow lines that you see are parallel to each other. So what makes two lines parallel? The distance between the two lanes, that it has to be the same at any point. If that distance increases or decreases, they will definitely intersect at one point. Look at this example. The distance between them are one inch, therefore they will never intersect. What are perpendicular lines? Perpendicular lines, they cross at a 90 degree angle. Now, what if you take parallel lines and intersect them with another line that is not perpendicular? Because if I use perpendicular lines, that means I created 90 degree angles and I do not want to create 90 degree angles. So here's two lines and cut them with another line that is not perpendicular to create different angles other than 90 degrees. This line that crosses or cuts the two parallel line is called a transversal. For example, look at the train track again. The pieces of wood are parallel lines but then that piece of metal that connects all these pieces of wood is called a transversal. So a transversal is a line that intersects two or more lines. And when a transversal cut two parallel lines, pairs of congruent angles are formed. Look at those two parallel lines cut by the red transversal. At the first intersection, there are four angles created. One, two, three, and four. The second intersection, Angle 5, 6, 7, and 8 are created. Four acute angles, you can see number 2, 3, 6, and 7. And four obtuse angles, 1, 4, 5, and 8 are obtuse angles. I'm going to show you an easy way to remember that. Tell yourself you're cute. See how you created an acute angle less than 90 degree? And then tell yourself you're right. That's a 90 degree angle then an obtuse angle, then a straight angle or a straight line, and that gives you 180 degrees. So again, straight, 180, obtuse is less than 180, but more than 90 degrees. Then a right angle, that's a 90 degree angle. Acute is thus less than 90 degree angle. When you have two parallel lines cut by transversal, you have the first intersection with four angles and the second intersection with four angles. Those pairs of angles, they have relationship. Some of them are congruent, some of them are supplementary. We will be discussing all kind of relationship that is created by two parallel lines and a transversal. The first one will be corresponding angles, then vertical angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and then supplementary angles. The first one to discuss is corresponding angles. When a transversal intersects parallel lines, corresponding angles are congruent. And if you remember from last unit, corresponding means occupy the same location, but this time at each intersection. So look at the two parallel lines. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight angles. Angle one corresponds with angle five. They both on top of the line to the left of the transversal. Number two and number six are corresponding angles on top of the parallel lines to the right of the transversal. Number three and number seven are corresponding angles and they are congruent. They both are on the bottom of the parallel line to the left of the transversal. Four and eight are congruent because they are corresponding angles they both are on the bottom of the two parallel lines to the right of the transversal. Now let's talk about vertical angles. Each of the pairs of opposite angles at an intersection called vertical angles, and vertical angles are congruent angles. So here's an intersection, two angles across or the opposite side 
are congruent angles because they are vertical angles. So angle one and angle four are vertical angles and they are congruent angles. Angle two and angle three are on the opposite side of the intersection. They call vertical angles and they are congruent angles. Angle five and angle eight are vertical angles. Angle six, angle seven are vertical angles because they are on the opposite side of the intersection. Now, alternate interior angles. Each pair of alternate interior angles are also congruent. And from the word alternate interior, they are inside the two parallel lines. So three, four, five, six are interior angles. But when we say alternate, they are on the opposite side of the transversal. So stay inside the two parallel lines on the opposite side of the transversal. So four and five are alternate interior angles and they are congruent. Three and six are alternate interior angles and they are congruent. Now what about alternate exterior angle? Now think about the angles outside the two parallel lines. One, two, seven, and eight are outside of the two parallel lines. Alternate, same thing, are on the opposite side of the transversal. So two and seven are alternate exterior angles and they are congruent. One and eight are alternate exterior angle and they are congruent. Now what about supplementary angles? The sum of the angles equal to 180. So if you have two angles, let's say one and two, they are supplementary angles if I add them they give me 180 degree. Stay on the same line, straight line makes 180 degree. Three and four also makes a straight line, that's 180 degree. What if I look at the transversal as a straight line? Then one and three are supplementary angles, they add up to 180. But now what I want you to think about, how can I relate this intersection with this intersection? If you slide this line up to this line, then all these angles will correspond to these angles, and they are congruent. That's one way to think of it. So if I add one, which is an acute angle, to number six, which is an obtuse angle, they give me 180 because six and two are congruent, they corresponding angles. See how if you slide it, they will match because they correspond in angles. So if one and two are supplementary angles, then one and six also supplementary angles because two and six are congruent. Now let's see if we can apply what we learned to find a missing measure when you have two parallel lines cut by transversal. So complete the statement, explain your reasoning. The first one, if the measure of angle one is 124 degree, then the measure of angle four is what? It's also 124 degree because one and four are vertical angles. They're on the same intersection on the opposite side of the intersection. Let's see if we can find the measure of the angle X. You have the street, parallel lines A and B, with a train track C, D. I know those lines are parallel. A and B are parallel lines because they have that arrow on the line itself indicating they are parallel lines. Then you have the train track C and D also are parallel lines. I know that for a fact because of the errors on the line. Now, how can that help me find the value or the measure of X? So many different ways you can do that. The easiest one is to use transformation. If I can slide line D on line C, then it becomes the transversal A and B are the parallel line, so the relationship between 50 and X will be supplementary angles, add them up to 180, so X equals 130 degrees. Again, 50 degrees is an acute angle, X is an obtuse angle, any acute angle with an obtuse angle are supplementary angles. Try and remember the relationship between the angles and that will help you justify the relationship between any of the angles 
in two parallel lines cut by a transversal. That's it for today's lesson. Thank you for listening.